Episode 147, Get Out of Here. Alex sat in the smaller living room and watched Rose vent her anger. He turned his head away bitterly and looked disappointed. Alex, Sue said to him in a low voice. She never thought he would have this kind of conflict with her niece. Although she had only known him for less than two days, Sue knew that he was not like what Rose had described. I'm fine. Whatever she says doesn't affect me. Alex raised his head and smiled at Sue. Don't lie to me. I can see that you care, Sue said. Although Alex was smiling, it was with a hint of disappointment. She leaned toward him and asked with concern, Do you have a misunderstanding with Rose? Alex didn't say anything. He turned his head and looked out the window to hide the sadness in his eyes. He thought about how he had helped Rose so much, but now she mocked him in front of everyone. He felt foolish. Bam! Alex raised his fist and smashed it down on the coffee table in front of him. The tea set on the table fell with a crash, and some pieces breaking and others rolling on the floor. Rose, who had been chattering non-stop, jumped up in fright. Looking at Alex, whose anger had turned to embarrassment, she felt a trace of guilt. He looks so angry. I must have made him furious, but why do I feel so uneasy and guilty now? Isn't this what I want to see? She thought. Countless questions appeared in her mind. What's wrong with you? Sarah found another opportunity to dislike Alex. You're still so cocky in my daughter's house. Sarah pointed her finger at him. Get the hell out of here. Who do you think you are? I've told you this before when you said and did those wicked things back at my house. She cried. Alex wanted to kick Sarah out, but he stopped himself when he saw Jade. After all, he had made a promise to her and her husband the previous day. If he could not keep his promise, it would make life difficult for this couple. Alex kept his promises, so he did not say anything. Mom, don't talk so much. It's not a big deal, so please just sit down. Jade quickly calmed her mother and complained. My dear mother, can you not cause me any more trouble? You're making me worry. With Jade's comforting words, Sarah also sat down. Ding dong. Jade ran to open the door. Sheldon had finally returned, so she felt slightly relieved. Sorry, I've made you all wait. I'll go to the kitchen now and get dinner ready. He walked in with a large shopping bag filled with all kinds of vegetables and meat. On his other hand were live chickens. Where's the kitchen? Sheldon whispered to Jade. She ushered him toward the kitchen. Very soon, the sound of tinkling could be heard. Sarah stood up and went to help them cook. All goes well. Gary couldn't get close to Sue now, so he decided to make her mother happy before making a move. He followed Sarah into the kitchen. Rose's mood was somewhat calmer. She walked up the stairs to the second floor to look around. Cluck, cluck, cluck. The shrill sound of a chicken being slaughtered rang out from the chicken. Georgina had been quietly sitting in her room when she heard the sounds of clucking with her sensitive ears. She slowly opened her eyes and stood up. For the first time, she opened the door and slowly walked out of her room. Rose was in a room on the second floor and did not notice Georgina, the grandma, passing by. Grandma walked down the stairs slowly and lightly. She did not make a single sound. It was not until Grandma got down the stairs that she noticed there were more people in the house. Alex saw her when she was already in the living room. He couldn't help but turn pale with fright. Why did she come down here? She could kill someone so easily, he thought. Who are you? Jade and Sue also noticed Grandma's presence. Granny, these are my friends. Alex ran to her side, afraid that she would kill them. He didn't notice that she already had two blades in her hands. What's wrong? Sarah, Gary, and Sheldon came out of the chicken to see what was going on. She just... Seeing the strange woman in the living room, Sarah was extremely surprised. The doorbell hadn't rung, which meant that this woman had always been in the house. Sarah looked at Sheldon angrily and said, Sheldon, who is she? Why is she in your villa? Uh, I don't know. 
Sheldon was also confused. How could he know that there was another person in the villa? You still want to lie to me? Is she your mistress? Grandma had rejuvenated to a younger version of herself, so Sarah saw that this strange woman was prettier than her daughter. She guessed that her son-in-law had been keeping another woman on the side. No, Mom, don't let your imagination run wild. She really isn't. Sheldon waved his hands in denial. Mom, I believe Sheldon. He has nothing to do with this woman, Jade said, speaking up for her husband. She knew that this villa belonged to Alex. Even if there was a hidden beauty inside, she would be here because of him and not her husband. You're all in trouble, Sarah cursed loudly. You're so noisy. The woman's sharp eyes landed on Sarah and the rest of the group. Her gaze stabbed into the vase beside them. As her pupils constricted, a daffodil fell to the ground. The vase lifted and flew towards Sarah and the others with a loud crash. They screamed, but they didn't know that it was the woman who had caused the damage. This vase is so odd, Sarah sighed and continued to snap at the intruder. Little vixen, get the hell out of here right now. Are you tired of living, damn you? The strange young woman got angry when she heard Sarah. Her palm moved and a blade appeared. She wanted to end the noisy woman's life. Seeing this, Alex was shocked and hurriedly grabbed Grandma's hand. Granny, no, they don't understand. Please leave them alone, Alex said in a low voice. Let go. Alex knew that at least one person would die if he let go of her. Although he was afraid, he still held tightly onto her hand. For some reason, the gaze of the strange woman standing in front of her made Sarah's heart turn cold and she took a step back. Sarah, don't be afraid, I'll protect you. I think she wants to beat you up, so I'll defend you. It was a good time to please Sarah, so Gary volunteered to protect her. Are you still not letting go? Grandma's shoulders trembled, and without exerting any strength, she caused Alex to feel a sharp pain in his arms. He felt as though he had been twisted into a circle, but he still did not let go of her. Seeing Alex grit his teeth, Grandma's heart skipped a beat, and her eyes became blank for a moment. She seemed to have thought of something. Let go, she demanded. Alex had no choice but to let her go after Grandma put in a bit more effort. He fell to the ground with both of his arms aching and sore. The moment Alex released his grip on her, she quickly raised her hand and several sharp blades flew out. Alex's heart instantly turned cold. Shoot, shoot, shoot! In less than a second, six or seven blades flew through the air. They were all unharmed, except for Gary, who had been standing in front of Sarah. His clothes slowly revealed long slits. One piece of cloth fell to the ground. Two pieces of cloth fell to the ground. A few more pieces of cloth fell to the ground. Gary's clothes were tattered. It was as if someone had used a pair of scissors to cut them up. His body had countless small cuts from the blades. Gary moved stiffly as he touched his body. It felt like he had survived a disaster. The others were also stunned. The strange woman walked slowly towards Sarah and slapped her in the face heavily twice causing her to bleed from the corner of her mouth. Then she slowly walked toward Alex and said, This group of people is very annoying. I'll go out and look around. I'll be back in two hours. They're still here. I won't care about the consequences. Yes, Alex nodded. She did not kill anyone, which was already a relief for him. With that, Grandma slowly walked out of the villa. Mom, how are you? Sue, Jade, and Sheldon rushed to Sarah's side. Sarah started crying. She stood up and pointed angrily at Alex. So you brought that damn woman here. You'll pay for this. Sarah was no longer afraid after the woman left, so she decided to vent all her anger on him. Gary, go over there and slap him twice. I'll let you marry my daughter. Sarah grabbed him by his tattered clothes, commanding him to take revenge for her. Maybe next time. I still need to see a doctor, so I won't be staying. Gary rushed out of the villa in his tattered clothes. You're useless. Get lost. Sarah cursed at his back. 
Sheldon, this is your villa. Kick this bastard out, and then help me call the police to arrest that damn woman. Sarah felt extremely upset and wanted Alex to pay the price. Um, Sheldon mumbled in embarrassment. This was Mr. Ambrose's villa, so how could he kick him out? Mom, calm down first. Let's sit down and talk. What are you talking about? I don't have anything to talk about with this damn swindler. Sarah was flustered and exasperated. She stood up and walked toward the door angrily as she spoke. Sheldon and the rest of the group could not stop her. You stay. I can leave, Alex said. It seemed he had no choice but to go away. He walked over to Sheldon and patted his shoulder. I'll leave now and come back in two hours. Get lost! What right do you have to come back here in two hours? Do you think this is your home? We don't want to see you again. Sarah felt great when she heard that Alex was leaving. Alex sighed and walked toward the door. This is your home. Why are you leaving? An apologetic voice could be heard from the second floor.